This is Bank Sense, the podcast that makes sense of all things banking. If there's something you don't understand about banking or finances, you're not alone. Our industry experts are bringing you informative and enjoyable conversations to break down bank jargon and dive into hot button financial topics. And now, BOS, a community bank located across Illinois and Missouri, presents Bank Sense. Here's your host, Gregory Morantz. Hello, and welcome back to the Bank Sense Podcast, the podcast that makes sense of all things banking. I'm your host, Greg Morant, Senior Vice President here at the Bank of Springfield. And on today's episode, we're going to dive in to business banking and your small business banking um, needs for your small business. I'm joined today by Jessica Naylor, an Assistant Vice President and Business Services Manager here at the Bank of Springfield at our Wabash location in Springfield, Illinois. Uh, and I'm excited to bring Justin on today to really dive into some of those things that those small businesses should be keeping an eye on to run their businesses more effectively and more efficiently. Justin, welcome. Hey, thanks, Greg. Thanks for having me. Yeah. First, before we really dive into the topic, I'd like to like you to give us a little bit of background just about yourself, how long you've been at the bank, and, and what you do here. Yeah, believe it or not, it's been almost six years. It'll be six years this fall, and um, quite honestly, I, I wish I would have done it sooner. You know, I had a 10-year career in, in baseball, and I got into coaching for a few years, and uh, once the family started coming around, I had a conversation with Jason and, and your dad, obviously, and... I tell you what, I've been I've been in business services and business development ever since I joined six years ago, and it's seriously it's the best thing I've ever done. And uh, so lucky to be with BOS and have the team that we have here at the bank. Yeah, we're very fortunate to have you on the team and leading our business services department. You've done a, a great job, and uh, we're excited to dive into the topic today. And really, what we're going to focus on is you know what those small businesses need to be successful. Um, and one of the things that the bank offers is obviously our customized, you know, cash management solution. Can you uh, expand a little bit on what that what that looks like um, for a customer? Yeah, you know, I'm very fortunate, Greg, to work with a lot of our, our businesses, um, a lot of our bigger customers and whatnot. And so our main focus is is trying to customize a solution for each one of those businesses. And you know, we have you know a vast array of all kinds of products and services, but one of the day-to-day needs that they have is that cash management, that daily cash management. And so we try to customize that particular piece across the board. So, you know, who needs access? Why do they need access? What level of access do they need? So our online system is called eBusiness. And so we try to get all of our business customers to use that eBusiness platform. And through that, you know, we can give anybody access and customize accordingly, um, and we can secure it. So for example, as the owner of that business, they may want full functionality. They, they, they may want to send ACHs, wires, do remote deposit from the luxury of their own offices, um, internal transfers between accounts. If maybe they've got a, an associate. They, they just want to have viewable access to full statement to do some reconciling. Maybe they've got just one person that they want to be able to do remote deposit and not see account balances. Uh, maybe they got somebody that just, like an account that uh, just be able to needs to log in and see transactions, whatever it is. I mean, we can customize this thing any way they want. And that's the that's the beauty of it. So we've got two different platforms. We have e-banking, which is more your retail side, but this e-business platform is great. So that's the first product that we typically will customize for our, for our customers. And so just having the, the conversations with those customers to find out, okay, what are your day-to-day needs? And so I spend a lot of time with that, our team, you know, the business services team, I spend a lot of time just meeting with those customers and find out what do you need? What does your day-to-day processes and procedures look like? The other thing great about e-business, and I, I, I like to think that all of our things are very secure, but with e-business, um, there's a secure multi-factor authentication login process. So obviously you've got your traditional username and passwords that you have to use for a lot of different things, but we use tokenized access. Anytime you are sending money outside of the bank account, you're going to log in with a tokenized access, which is a, a random eight-digit number. Plus, you've got a four-digit PIN number that you have to use in order to log in. you got security questions. And so you may think, those that, that are listening may think it's somewhat cumbersome to log in, but it, it's really not. But it's very secure. And as you start thinking about cybersecurity and things like that, if you're going to get insurance for those things, you're going to want to make sure that you're using multi-factor authentication. So... Um, that's, that's just one product that we have in the business services world, but that is kind of the, the nucleus of e-business or business services because every single one of our business customers that has a business banking account with us has to have online access for the most part. I, don't, I, don't, I can't even think of one that would not have to be logging in on a regular basis to view their activity and do some type of functionality. So, yeah, and I think the important thing to know is, too, is if you don't have online access yet, that's something you're going to definitely need in the future because that's absolutely. definitely the wave of the future and, and the, the way business is going. Um, the one thing I did want to just chime in about, too, is I think it's really important to emphasize that, that customized word. 
because what's right for you might not be right for me. Um, and to each person and each business is going to be different. Uh, so that's one of our resounding themes on the podcast as well is ask the question. Don't be afraid to ask that question and, and see what we can do for you because we want to help our customers out being that community bank. We want to be with them together as a partner to help sure, help make sure they're operating as efficiently as possible and as safe as possible. Well, as you well. said it right, Greg. You know, yeah, obviously we partner with our businesses and you know, we're, we're a commercial lending bank. I mean, obviously we, we have retail uh, customers and you know, we, we like to think we can do it all and be a one-stop shop for, for anybody that walks in our doors, but that partnership and building that relationship. And so, yeah, asking those questions and really holding that customer's hand all the way through the process. And some are more savvy than others, but, you know, we're pretty good at, uh, you know, reading which ones are going to need that extra extra attention. So. Yeah. So we've talked about e-business and our e-business platform. Now, that's not obviously not the only product we offer to our small business um, customers. What are some other products that, you know, they may need to ask about or may be interested in um, using as well to help them operate uh, more effectively? Yeah, which we, like I said, we try to be a one-stop shop. You know, we if there's a product out there that a bank can offer to a business customer, we want to try to provide it inside the walls of our of our company, uh, of our bank. So any any type of account, obviously, Greg, you know, we've got the, your business accounts and your savings accounts, money markets and whatnot, especially with interest rates being up. But it goes much more beyond that. So outside the cash management, we have merchant processing. So a lot of businesses uh, need to be able to accept credit cards now. And so we have a third-party vendor that we use called Global Payments and TSIS. And so we are an agent bank for that company. So we can we can do your old school basic terminals on a on a desk or wherever or on your counter to be able to accept credit cards via the chip um, swipes. We can, we have different types of terminals that you can go mobily with. We can integrate with websites, you know, and offer a uh, virtual terminal. Um, we can integrate with some point of sale systems. You know, any, anybody that goes to a restaurant now, you know, there's there's a different kind of POS system, point of sale system for any type of industry out there. So we can integrate with many of those. So we try to see how we can help those customers that need to accept, our business customers that need to accept credit cards. Um, we get to control the pricing. So any type of credit card uh, payments that you, that you need to accept, we also do lockbox, you know, and so lockbox is an accounts receivable process where basically if you're a, well, if you're a medical office or an insurance company or you're a business that receives a lot of mail that are people sending you um, dues or, you know, checks in the mail, we can actually reroute those payments to come directly to a P.O. box at the bank. We process all that mail. We open it. We scan everything in. We make that deposit for you. And we are basically sending you a daily file of what's come in. And that's called the lockbox receivable process or payments remittance center, whatever you want to call it. But it's just a great way for the business to let the bank process that and not have to have any of their personnel on staff dedicated to just opening mail, running trips to the bank, et cetera. So, and then, you know, the other, the other things that we try to work closely with is we have our own BOS insurance agency. So my department works very close with the BOS insurance agency. I actually have my own um, insurance license. And so I don't necessarily write policies, but I work closely with our insurance department because you know all of our business customers need some type of insurance, whether it's property, casualty, cyber, um, commercial liability, you name it. Um, we definitely want to be able to have the ability to help those customers. And then 401ks, group health benefits. So again, that, that, that method of trying to be a one-stop shop for our customers so they don't have to have four or five different companies that they're working with. And maybe maybe there's more value to them to working with that many companies. But if we can provide it, we want to be competitive and we want to try to provide that to our business customers. Yeah, and I think the real benefit to that too is you're going to be working with a friendly face that you've worked with on, on multiple different things. And, and we're going to help you make that best decision for your business to be successful moving forward. Yeah, building that trust. You know, building that trust. And, you know, we didn't, I'm not, I'm not a commercial lender, you know, so I don't physically do a lot of business loans or any business loans for that matter for the Bank of Springfield, but I refer a lot to our commercial lenders. Um, if I'm working with a business customer says, hey, can you help me with this loan? Well, I will quarterback it to the lender that I think will be best with them uh, that can earn that trust. And then conversely, several of our commercial lenders are just doing the loan, but then they work closely with me to get them hooked up with e-business and any of their ancillary products and services. So it's a great team effort, but like you just said, we got to earn their trust. Yeah, and then one of the next topics that I kind of want to get into is the topic that's, I think, on the top of everyone's mind is fraud um, oh, yeah. that we're really experiencing a lot of, and, and I think it's something that I know you get out with your customers and really talk about. It's going to be a topic we're going to be discussing a lot on the podcast is being fraud. Um, what are a couple items that we you can offer to business customers to help mitigate that fraud, um, just to kind of give a brief overview of what we can really do to help help them out. Yeah, exactly. And I, I know you know we hear from it from our IT our IT staff uh, on a regular basis. 
Yeah, when it comes to protecting your business, um, using that e-business platform is number one because you're logging in with multi-factor authentication. So eventually, essentially, there's no way for that session to be hacked. Um, you know, we can talk about emails getting hacked and all that, but that's you know probably for a later conversation. But using that multi-factor authentication is number one. We also use Positive Pay. Now, Positive Pay is a check fraud and soon to be ACH fraud prevention um, product. And so how that works is you know, the business customer will upload a file that has all their outgoing checks and that those checks have a date, a check number, a payee, and an amount. And so when they upload that file into the e-business cash management platform, when those checks get sent out and then get presented from the other banks for payment, if they do not match that date, that payee, that date, and that, that amount, it is our check number rather, it's not going to get paid. You know, and we're gonna we're gonna do our checks and balances. We're gonna reach out to the customer if it doesn't match, and just make sure that there was no error on their end. But it it prevents ninety nine point nine nine percent of fraud. You know, and I, I like to say everything anything's one hundred percent, but it's really not. Um, but it is it is preventing a lot of fraud. So uh, using taking advantage of the positive pay product is is number one for our businesses. I would like to get to the point, and I'm I'm joking when I say this, but I would like to charge our business customers a fee for not using positive. Because it is a product that we will 100% give you for free. If you're willing to take that extra five minutes that it takes to upload that file into our cash management, it is going to save us a lot of work on the on the back end and you a lot of work on the back end when fraud does happen. Yeah, and a lot so of money. It's going to, yeah, it's going to prevent it. So um, it's really not that much work. And if you're using a bookkeeping software now like a QuickBooks or, you know, there's 100 different bookkeeping softwares out there, Odds are it will generate a check file for you in a CSV format or some type of X9 mm -hmm. format that will that will automatically upload into our cash management. So that is that is huge. And then also with our e-business, it has a very robust alert and notification um, system. So you could you could set up any type of alert or notification anytime anything is hitting that account or presenting into that account, you're going to be notified immediately via email, via text, however you want to be notified. And so you can immediately go into your account and monitor that activity. And I just use a very key word called monitoring the account. We have customers, believe it or not, and we try to avoid this with our continuing education, but we have customers that don't go in and reconcile their accounts for months at a time. And so if you're a business owner or you just have, even if you're not a business owner, if you just have a regular bank account, monitor that account at least every other day. I would like to say daily. But you have to be monitoring that account to make sure that you know what's going in and out of the account. Unfortunately, fraud is a, what is it, a multi-trillion dollar industry. Mm -hmm. And then people are losing trillions of dollars every year collectively. And so these, these things put in place by the bank are huge. If you just monitor your account, you know, have your multi-factor authentication. If you're a business and you issue a lot of checks or payments out of that account, get on positive pay. Those three things are huge. Absolutely huge. That the alerts is something I really want to key in on too, and not just for businesses, but for your personal accounts as well. Having those set up helps you monitor your account. And you're right, being in the banking industry, obviously we see fraud every day every come day. across our desks. Desks, you know, it, that can be um, very uh, disappointing and a lot of different emotions for for customers, for bankers, and everything. And we really want to help mitigate that. So I really want to uh, impress upon everyone that monitor your accounts, keep an eye on it. Because you never know what might have happened or what might happen. And, and these products can really help you mitigate the chance for you to, to potentially lose um, a significant sum of money. 100%. And when it, comes to, when it comes to check fraud, for example, and what we're seeing now is checks, checks are getting intercepted and these fraudsters are able to pretty much whitewash the payee, put their own payee name in there. And it presents as normal. Now, mm -hmm. now positive pay will catch that. But you know, if you're monitoring your accounts and you see that, you you, you could you can probably catch that. But when it, when a check presents, we've only got about 48 hour window to pull that back and to, to stop it if it's if it's not on positive pay. So, that, like I said, monitoring that account every other day or if not every day is huge. If it's an electronic payment, it's an ACH payment. We've got a little bit more of a window there to try to recoup those that loss. But again, why take the chance? You know, yep. put these put these things in place to try to try to prevent it before it happens. Yeah, it's incredibly important to be proactive. And the last topic I really just want to touch on uh, somewhat briefly is the FDIC insurance. That's really a, a very hot topic in the news as of late. Uh, and what products that we have that we can help uh, help a customer that may be over that insurance limit of 250000 at the FDIC. 
Um, can you talk about that product a little bit? I'm yeah, that is the uh, that is the flavor of the month, you know. And so we, yeah, we have heard a lot of buzz in the media about you know the large banks failing. And you know, Greg, you and I have talked about this, and internally we've talked about this. The big banks that have failed around the country, are, it's apples and oranges compared to what community banks are all about. And yeah, we're we're in great shape. But the one thing that we are able to participate because we are a strong community bank is, is we can participate in the Interfi network. And what the Interfi network is, it is a network of about 2,500 banks nationwide. Um, all these banks are FDIC insured banks. They are all well capitalized and in good financial standing. And so what it allows us to do is allows our business customers that do regularly keep deposits over that $250,000 limit to work with just BOS, and they can keep as much on deposit as they want with it. And we can insure every penny 24-7, 365. And it's genius. And it, it, I don't know how long the program's been around now. It might be close to 10 years. It used to be called Insured Cash Sleep Program. And it works for, works for demand deposit accounts. So for operating accounts, it works for money market accounts. And we can also do CDs. For example, we've, you know, we have a customer that may have $30 million with us. We can insure every cent of it, 24-7, 365. And it's all done behind the scenes in the network. And it's, it's just great because the old school way, as you, as you, as you know, You'd have a customer that's got a million dollars that's required by their audit to be insured at all times. They'd have to go find four different banks or four banks total if they had a million dollars. And what a, what a reconciling nightmare that would be to have to have to make sure, okay, where I have this money and what banks it's sitting at and I got to reconcile all these statements. This is just two statements total because you've got your account and then you've got your Interfi network account. Fully transparent, you know exactly which banks we're using for the insurance. And it's just great. It's a great feeling. Yeah. And I think that's the important thing that we've, we constantly mention on the podcast is don't be afraid to ask that question. If you're at a different banking institution, ask that question. Are my deposits insured? Mm -hmm. Are they, or what, what percentage isn't insured? You know, and how can, what can we do to make sure they are insured? Um, and, you know, tying back into the rest of the topics today, it really is asking that extra question. You know, how can the bank help the customer be more efficient? Because that's what we want in the end is we want our customers to be successful. And I think you, as you look down a product lineup, you don't know what might work for you or what might be the right fit. And I think that's the nice thing that um, we're able to do is um, reach out and really customize the solution for them based on what they need. So don't be afraid to ask that ex extra question um, because you never know when we might say yes and we can do something for you or we might be able to find a solution and help you with that because that's something we, we is our end goal is to really help our, our customers. Yeah, we try to be more proactive on that side too. You know, with our, with our CRM system, we're trying to contact our customers on a regular basis because we're ever evolving, right? So our products, we got to keep up with the Joneses on, on the products and services that we offer. So, you know, through our process or Fiserv and all the other different, uh, you know, third-party vendors that we use for some of our products and services, they're always upgrading and making things better. So as we adapt those, we have to make sure, hey, are you aware of this? So we don't always want to wait for our customers to reach out to us, but please do, because you might hear of a bank doing something that, uh, or a colleague or something that's doing something different. Don't be afraid to ask, but um, we try to be proactive on sure. our end as well by reaching out and saying, hey, we've got this now. You guys should consider doing this. Yeah. So. Well, thank you very much for all the information today. I think it's really important for those small businesses to really keep an eye on you know, what they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, whether it be with fraud or, or how they're affecting their customers as well. And, and I think we can be a good partner to, to help them do that. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time Thanks for having uh, and coming on and talking about this topic. Uh, for the Bank Sense Podcast, we'll see you next time. Is there something about banking that doesn't make sense to you? Submit your questions to us on Instagram Messenger or by email, banksense at bankwithbos.com. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, comment below. We're happy to give you our two cents on a wide range of topics. Thank you for listening on Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. And please leave us a five-star rating and review so we can continue to bring you more educational content. Thank you for listening, and we hope you join us on the next episode of Bank Sense.